Do you have a glitch in the matrix that you've experienced? Well, consider sending it my way. Go to AsTheRavenDreams.com or check the links down below. And of course, thank you as always. I think it's weird. Maybe it's just a coincidence, but it feels like it isn't. When I'm driving home from work, I tend to see the same cars. I know that's nothing unusual. People getting out of their jobs at the same time, going home or whatever. But the same black car, an Audi with its left headlight out, flies up behind me, going way faster than the residential speed limit. The speed limit is 45 to 50 miles per hour, and he's doing at least 65 to 70, stopping maybe a foot off my rear. He then stays a foot off of my car for a while, and then darts around me passing in a no-passing zone. I always do the speed limit, because my car sucks, <laughs> and I can't afford the risk of a ticket. The car then makes a left down a side street, so... Two miles down the road, I go to make a left, and coming from another direction, on my right, an identical black Audi with its left headlight out cuts me off turning down the road that I just came from. I know these roads. I grew up here, and I know every single side street, etc. It is impossible for that to have been the same car, Yet the year, make, model, and headlight out were all the same. The weird part was that the driver looked the same. I mean identical. White male, aged around 40-ish, clean-shaven, dressed in a long-sleeved blue dress shirt. I can give such a clear description because of how close he gets to the back of my car and how close he gets passing me. This happened on Monday, and then again on Tuesday, but Tuesday the second car didn't cut me off. I saw it in my rearview mirror making the left. Then again, Wednesday, I made sure to get the license plate number, because later down the road, what was likely the first car was in front of me at a red light. On the Monday, it was on my left at that same light, and that's when I got the clearest look at the guy. He was very stone-faced, like a Vulcan, staring straight ahead. I made a comment out loud to myself sarcastically that the Matrix is getting really lazy reusing NPCs, so obviously. I mean, come on, the whole left headlight thing was a dead giveaway. Then, after he made his turn away from me, I saw eight different cars and trucks with their left headlights out. Eight in less than five minutes. It was like the Matrix was like, whoops, uh, don't look. It's not unusual. I just started laughing every time I saw one after the other. I said, holy crap, does it care that I notice, or was it listening to me? Why is it that stupid to expose itself more trying to cover up the glitch? Or is a living being outside the Matrix playing with us like lab rats? I stopped thinking about it because I was almost at my destination. As I get out of my car, I overhear a neighbor on her phone. She says, Oh man, my driver's side headlight is out. I don't know what the hell is going on with people like me, but I've come to the conclusion that if you notice a glitch and refuse to dismiss it, it causes more glitches and it calls attention to you. You know the saying, if you gaze long enough into the abyss, the abyss will gaze back into you. I think that may be more true than people think. I work as a part-time retail manager while going to school, 
and last Thursday night was my turn to close and count the registers. It was a relatively slow day, so we didn't have any cash deposits. We always keep $500 in the drawer as starting cash, so when I counted down both registers for the night, they were exactly at $500, as they were supposed to be. I double-checked the receipts to make sure there were no cash transactions, like normal, and proceeded with my paperwork. Nothing out of the ordinary there. Unfortunately, it was also my turn to open the next day. Clopen shifts suck in retail, and it's protocol to always count the registers before opening the store, even if you were the one to close the night prior. I counted register 1, $500, as expected. I count register 2, and it reads 50250. That's odd. I must have counted wrong. I restart my counting summary and try again. $502.50. Huh. Must be wrong again. After three times recounting the register... I continuously get 502.50. I'm seriously questioning my counting abilities at this point. Fed up, I unwrapped all the change rolls and proceeded to hand count everything again while keeping a handwritten summary of the counts. I count everything and add it all up manually to check it with the computer. All of the counts and calculations are the same. Still, $502.50. Finally, after counting everything like two more times, I just could not figure out where the extra $2.50 came from. For those that don't work retail, $2.50 is such an odd number to be off, because it can only happen if you're either significantly off on your coin counts, or the dollar bills and some coins. Since I counted everything at least six times, I didn't think that was feasible. So I set the $2.50 off into our spare change, and I told the closing manager to be aware of it. I just talked to that manager, and he said the counts for Friday were perfect, without adding the extra $2.50 that I found in the morning. Assuming that both of our counts are right, that would mean the register physically gained $2.50 while no one was in the store. Keep in mind, we lock the doors, and we set an alarm when we have to leave, and only me and the other two managers have keys and codes to enter without alerting the alarm company. Even if someone were to enter the store while it was closed, you need our manager logins to open the store and thus open the registers, and whenever the store opens or closes, there is a record of it. I can confirm the store was not opened on the computers that night. The only logical explanation I have is that my main manager came in and added it by opening it with the key. Only he has the register key. Me and the assistant don't get them per policy. However, he's on vacation. And he sent me snaps of him on the beach on Thursday, so I'm sure it's not him. He comes back tomorrow, so I'll be sure to ask him, but... I think I may have somehow stumbled upon an infinite money glitch. This happened in the mid-2000s. My husband had bought a used pickup truck that had been worked on and souped up, as the saying goes. We called it his race truck. By all appearances, it seemed to be a normal truck. It ran fast, and I'm pretty sure we drove it for a while before noticing an odd occurrence. At this point in time, every morning during the week, my husband and I drove together to a place halfway between our jobs where I would pick up my car at a friend's business and head east, while he continued north. It saved on gas. Most of our commute together was on the interstate. 
there was one spot in particular where something very strange happened every morning around 6 a.m. We listened to talk radio during the ride, and several miles past a way station for tractor trailers, the radio would develop static and fuzz out. When it came back on, the previous minute of the broadcast we had just been listening to would play all over again, and then the broadcast would continue as normal. The first time it happened, we didn't think much of it. Just a crazy blip in the radio signal, right? And then it happened again the next day, and the next, and on and on. Every morning, the static and then the previous 60 seconds would play all over again. We thought it must be the radio station having issues. After a while, though, it went from being a curiosity to a downright annoyance. It was like having to do over a whole minute of every day. We couldn't find a rational explanation either, but it was somehow tied to that truck. If memory serves correctly, I think it did happen with another radio station one time. However, it did not happen in any other vehicles or near any other way stations. It continued to occur like clockwork for as long as my husband owned the truck, but after he sold it, we never experienced the repeating minute again. And that particular stretch of interstate does seem to possess some kind of time anomaly. It's like an inverse of Einstein's theory. For about a 25-mile stretch, which includes the way station, I have noticed the faster I drive, the longer it takes to reach my destination. Conversely, the slower I drive, I make it with time to spare. I've monitored the clock against my speedometer, and even allowing for morning traffic, this still bears out. My husband and I call it the time tunnel, and I've been on time to work many mornings thanks to this anomaly. Past that 25-mile range, however, it's back to the ordinary laws of physics, so you'd better step on it. This all took place just before the pandemic shut down the world. Lent had just started during the last week of February 2020, and I was looking forward to six weeks of fish fries at the church across town every Friday. Thanks to the aforementioned global event, and subsequent lockdown, only two of the six scheduled fish fries took place before the remaining four were cancelled. I went to the first fish fry of Lent after work on Friday, February 28th, 2020. When I arrived at around 5.30pm, it had already been taking place for an hour. As I stood in line to pay for my meal, I saw a 60-something-year-old woman taking order tickets and bringing food to people at their tables. I recognized her as Jenny, a longtime member of the church that I attended. I paid for my meal and was handed an order ticket. I found an empty seat in the dining hall, sat down, and I waved my ticket. Incidentally, Jenny saw me waving my ticket and walked up to me. She greeted me by name and we exchanged pleasantries before she brings my order ticket to the kitchen. About ten minutes later, she brought me my food on a tray and I proceeded to have a pleasant dinner. Throughout the evening, I saw Jenny go back and forth to the kitchen multiple times with order tickets and or trays of food in hand. In this glitch, it took place two days later. I went to my own church on Sunday morning. Following the service, I exited the church and saw Jenny at the bottom of the stairs, handing out church bulletins for that week. She greeted me by name just as she had during the fish fry, and then the following exchange took place. Me, Hello, Jenny. It was nice seeing you at the fish fry the other night. Jenny, nonplussed, the fish fry? Me, yes, the fish fry at the church across town. I hope they raised a lot of money. 
The whole time I was there for dinner, it looked like you didn't even sit down or take a break. Jenny, the fish fry at the name of the church across town. Me, yeah, that church. Jenny, I haven't been to that church in years. The last fish fry I went to there was just before Dell's stroke. Dell was Jenny's late husband, who had died seven years prior in 2013. I haven't talked to Jenny since, especially when the lockdown began. If she hadn't been to the fish fry at the other church in years, then who was that person that I talked to that Friday? So, this just happened to me, 45-year-old female and first-time sharer, a few minutes ago, and it really just freaked me out. I thought I would share it here, even though it's nothing like some of the truly bizarre accounts I've heard here before. Okay, so it's a regular Thursday morning. My daughter and granddaughter are outside, enjoying the cooler weather that just came in, and I'm working on my laptop on a few things. I needed to print several pages for a transfer of title that I'm working on, and blah blah blah. So, anyway, I had two print jobs in total, about five or six pieces of paper. There was already paper in the printer, which is located right next to my laptop, and has the paper feed in the back so that I can very easily see it from my sitting position on my desk chair. So the printer is doing its thing, and I notice that the last piece of paper is being fed through the printer, and I'm thinking, cool, I had just enough paper in the machine for what I needed. Just for clarification, I had more paper to put into the machine if I needed to, I was just being lazy and was happy that I didn't have to get up to replace it for these print jobs. <laughs> so, I grabbed the pages and I looked through them, making sure everything I needed was there, and printed okay. And when I look up, there's more paper in the back of the printer. At least another 20 pages. My jaw hit the floor, but... Then I remembered my granddaughter and daughter had walked in from the backyard, right by my desk, on their way to the living room. I was looking down at the pages I had printed, so I assumed my daughter saw it, saw that it was empty, and refilled it for me in 30 seconds. I had to ask her and my grandchildren, and all of them looked at me confused and said they didn't touch anything on my desk. My other two grandchildren were in their room playing, and hadn't even been anywhere near my desk. I am 1,000% sure the printing I did used every page that was in the printer. I saw it with my own eyes. And again, I was happy that I had just enough for what I needed to print. So I guess that this was my first glitch in the Matrix. Nothing major, I know, but for me, it was really mind-boggling. Has something similar ever happened to anyone else? Anyway, thanks for reading this, if you do, and thanks to anyone who listens. I got onto Route 17 South by the Riverside Terrace. I had to wait on the on-ramp as a tractor trailer pulled into the gas station behind the RT. I passed two slow cars, and then I pulled into the slow lane, which is rare for me. I left them behind, nobody was in front of me as far as I could see. I was 25 seconds, I estimated, from the bridge by the Suburban Caps sign that is always lit up. Only, it was off, which is odd. All cars are far behind me coming from the Sheridan Mawa area. I pick up my phone, Center Console 2011 Yaris. I check it for one second for messages, 
check the time, 9.48, check the car clock, same. As I set my phone down, the view alters to bright outside my car. I thought that I teleported to somewhere sunny, but it was just bright lights. I was now in traffic, with cars right on my back end. Me driving slow lane with cars on my back does not happen, ever, and a tractor trailer in the lane to my left and front. The road that had been curving slowly left was now curving hard right, and I was going under bridges. My lane peeled off, and I figured I'd get off here and figure out where I teleported to. If it was 17s, I'd know the exit. Well, it was the turnaround by Mawa Sheridan, bringing me back to 17S. I checked for missing time, 9.48 still on both clocks. Then I drove back past everything that I had just driven by moments earlier. The suburban cap sign was still out. For years, I thought that I teleported, but it makes more sense that I swapped place with another me that day. And after I got home, one outlet in my house had moved several inches from where it had always been. It was weird. Alright, I'm new to this sub, so please excuse any mistakes I make, but this has got me quite freaked out. So, I'm female, 21, I'm a line cook who works a night shift, so I wake up relatively late. My alarm goes off every day at 12.40pm, and today was no different. I woke up and started the usual morning routine, keeping track of how long I had to get ready with the analog clock in my bathroom. As I'm heading out the door, I pack my switch, the console, into my bag so I can play something on my lunch break, checking the battery level as I do. Right next to the battery gauge is the time, reading 1.20pm. All is normal so far. I head out the door, and I get in my Uber to go to work. Things get weird about 15 minutes into the 20 minute drive when my phone started going off in my pocket. I pull it out, only to see my 1240 alarm was going off. It took a second for the confusion to set in, but when it did, my first thought being, wait, did I wake up too early? Wait, no, my alarm. Huh, wait, what? My next move was to figure out if my phone, for some reason, was in a different time zone by texting my coworkers who scheduled to come in an hour before me. Succinctly, no, not at work yet and not running late either. Then I started googling when daylight savings time kicked in. Stupid I know, but I was confused as hell. So I wound up chilling out in a Starbucks a few blocks away until it was actually time for me to come into work. But I'm still shaken. Hopefully this doesn't become a daily thing. <laughs> I set off to pick my girlfriend up from work after being at my dad's. I entered the motorway, and there were only a few cars on there with it being Sunday at 10.30pm, and really cold out. Anyway, like I said, I entered the motorway and, after being on it for around 5 minutes, I see a car behind me. No car on the left or right lane, and I'm in the middle. As I'm looking at the car, I see it vanish. It couldn't have turned off at an exit as I passed the exit, and there were none for a while. I look ahead and back, thinking it changed lanes. I check the lanes. Nobody there. It was like I was driving up a hill and lost sight of it, but there were no hills. I was on a straight motorway. I did see signs saying salt has been laid down, 
and it got me thinking, was it a guardian angel telling me to stay in the same lane, or was it a glitch? This happened around two years ago, but since then other things have happened. I would say a certain word, and hear it on the TV a few seconds later, or talk about something, for example, cars, and bam, a car advert would come on. This has happened a lot of times. So do we live in a simulation, or is it just a bunch of coincidences? Anyway, I would love to hear all of your thoughts on this. Thanks. So that was this week's glitch in the Matrix Collection, and hopefully you all enjoyed it. I know that I did. And I know that you probably did too, because you guys seem to like these stories, so... That's why I keep doing them, right? <laughs> if you did enjoy the video, please do consider hitting that thumbs up button and subscribing to the channel if you're new. If you're not new, welcome back. Always appreciate a return customer. Repeat customer? I usually say repeat customer. Hmm. Anyway. So, the other thing you can do is leave me a comment with this week's word of the week, which I will tell you here in just a moment. However, last week's word of the week was a subject, and I expected mm, two, three comments on it, and somehow got 12. So thank you to the dozen of you that decided to leave a comment. They're on screen now. I'm having to get creative with how I put them on the screen, having to actually make it an image instead of just putting the screenshots over, overlaying them and such. So, yeah. Thank you again to everyone who decided to comment. Always appreciated. You guys are amazing. So, let's move forward to this week's Word of the Week. Um, as I said, I assumed that I would get maybe five comments at the most, and you guys blew it out of the water. So as such, let's make this week's Word of the Week Assumption. A-S-S-U-M-P-T-I-O-N, the act of taking to or upon oneself, the act of taking possession or asserting a claim, or the act of taking for granted. You can also use the word assume, or assumed if you want, I'll take separate, you know, uh, forms of the word, but assumption is the actual word. Good luck. <laughs> that all said, friends, I hope you have a beautiful day, and I hope I will see you on the next video, but until that day comes. Sleep well.